Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are experiencing some turbulence. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, remain in your seats and uh, keep your seat belts fastened until um, I turn off the fasten seat belt sound. Thank you very much. Tonight I'm here to talk about turbulence and how it makes a positive impact on both technology and what it's doing with smart cities. But that's not really why I'm here. I'm here tonight to really ask for some help and a favour. I'll get to that soon. To start with, I'll give you a bit of context and also share some of the things that I've been working on in the last 12 months. So, in my personal life, I'm the guy that likes the same coffee, goes to the same coffee shop, but the industry I work in, the technology industry, has given me a sort of side persona, and that's someone that's very comfortable with change. And that's because the technology industry is constantly changing. We all joke saying that the only thing that's constant in technology is that it will always be changing. And at the moment, we're seeing a lot of change in the internet. And that is really causing a second renaissance of the internet. And it's around a thing called the Internet of Things. Now, what the Internet of Things is, is it's kind of connecting the things that never were connected. So a sensor, an actuator, uh, a sprinkler, a car, you know, connecting those things that don't have an operator behind it. And what we're seeing is, is this last year, there's actually been an inflection point, that there's more things connected to the internet now that don't have a human element to it than there is with, over the last few years, have been connected around the device. And this is causing some mind-blowing problems. So in the last, in 2014 alone, we created more data and stored it on the internet in the form of information than we did in the previous 5,000 years of our lives. And this is really causing us to have some problems around how we manage that and how we innovate around that. But the exciting thing is, is it's letting us, our business leaders and our country leaders, really be able to solve problems that we haven't been able to solve. And this is where Dubai is certainly at the top of its game with some of its lofty goals around being the smartest and happiest city in the world. And now, I've sort of lived that for the last four, well, last 12 months to the day almost. So in December last year, Dubai hosted the Internet of Things World Forum. So about this time last year, we worked with all of the industry agencies, the RTAs of the world, the big developers, TCOM investments, uh, the aviation industry, and we wanted to work with them to really show some innovative POCs and really show how we could do things that haven't been done to, to solve problems that were happening on the ground. So in December, we had the Internet of Things World Forum. We had over 2,200 delegates from around the world come and visit Dubai and really get to go on a tour of the best that Dubai had to offer. And for us, that worked out to be around 13 use cases. And these use cases came from a top-down approach. So this wasn't how we can get technology to do something. It was, here's a problem we have, and how are we going to solve it using Internet of Things and technologies? So you know, one example was bins, a simple problem. We send a truck to a bin every day, regardless of whether it's empty or full. Now, in some communities, there's a problem with getting enough drivers of the trucks to go visit the bin. So they're looking at solutions around smart waste management because their workforce is shrinking. Here, we have a different problem. We have 50 degree temperatures in the summer and our bins smell a lot quicker than possible. So could we build a sensor that detected the obnoxious gases that cause that smell and then route the truck in the order of priority around these smells? What about street lighting? Could we have lighting that dynamically changes its intensity based off occupancy? Or could we make it so that the roads own, the highways only light up when there's cars there? Or what about integrating that with a parking solution where based off the occupancy of the parking, we have different lighting? These are the sort of things where, as you can see, they were very fit for purpose and taking a simple concept like lighting a street and using connectivity to make more intelligence. Another great example was what we were doing around indoor lighting. Now that we have intelligent lighting, or what we call a digital ceiling, how could I use that lighting in an emergency situation to actually lead the first responder to the right person who made the call or where that call came from? So being able to use lighting as a form of wayfinding. 
So we went through each of these different use cases, real-time passenger transport information, so you could, choose, you could know if that RTA bus you were going to catch had a seat free, or should I stay back at school or in the office for 15 minutes more because I can see the next bus has a seat. What about not needing to have a null card at all? How can my pure presence on that bus check me in and check me out for, for my fair payment? But one of the core elements to it was we were challenged by one of the developers for how can I feel the pulse of a city? How do I know what's happening from the waste management to the sentiment that's happening on social media? And how can I interact with that data quickly to be able to make factual based decisions and really be able to move from having experience and gut feel to be able to make knowledge based decisions of fact? And what we came up with was a command and control center. And this was straight from a sci-fi movie. I'll show my age, something like Minority Report, where I can walk around and touch and feel the data and be able to really become one with the city and get access to all these data from the sensors. So when we brought the delegates, this brought a lot of buzz. And that's now sort of December. And for the last four months, my role in, my role in Cisco has evolved from that. And now over the last four months, lots of agencies, lots of verticals have come to Cisco and we've been working together on solving business problems. How can we solve these business problems using technologies? And so the approach we've taken is inspire me days or innovation workshops or, or whatever you'd like to call them. But basically we've been working with each of these verticals to solve whatever their problems is. Sometimes be a lot easier than you think. It could be I've lost a plane, or maybe how do I make sure that my bus drivers are actually going on the right the right route? These are the sort of problems that, you know, from a business point of view, seem quite difficult. But with technology, we can solve. But through all of this innovation workshops we've been having, I've really seen three common things that keep on coming up, and that's what I need your help with. When we do these workshops, we really discover we need turbulence and we need a different way of thinking. And the number one thing from my industry is we always try and solve, think of solutions that use today's technology. So if we put into the innovation machine today's technology, all of a sudden, every solution that we come up with, there has to be an app for it, it has to have a social uni channel um, element to it, it'll probably be a wearable and it will probably have some sort of augmented reality. And what that really causes is we're not really envisaging a future of a smart city or a happy city 20, 30, 20, 50. We're thinking of a smart city for December or January. And that's not really going to change the way we build cities. That's not going to really truly make us happy. It's just going to give us more gadgets to have to worry about being charged. So the number one thing we need your help with is technology has had an amazing way of getting to that finish line just in time for us to need to be there. You know, if I think back to when MTV was still showing music clips, I would have never thought I'd be surfing the internet from a device and not hearing a modem squelch to get onto the internet. But funnily enough, by the time we needed these technologies to have wireless field area networks to have these sensors, technology got there. So when you're thinking of your solutions for how to about the city that you want to live in, solving the problems you have, and I'm sure technology as an industry will be there, ready for you, and having the right technology to make that happen. The second problem that I also need your help on is this more comes from the subject matter experts. So if you're ever in a room with a person like me, try and forget about the job you do. You're in that room because you have a wealth of knowledge on that particular subject matter, but what we find is, is that if you're not willing to be turbulent and push the social norms, the regulatory norms, the process norms, your smart solutions end up looking very much like the solution today with a few more bits tied around it. Why not push yourself to ask the question, why do we need to go through immigration anymore? Why do we need to board a plane one at a time? Why can't we be lifted in in a container or whatever? Truly don't forget the past and think about how you would want the solutions to be and then work backwards to work out on the ways to solve the process norms or the reskilling of the citizens to be able to be comfortable in this new space. Then the final one's a more challenging one to deal with. 
Um, imagine these innovation days. What do you think they look like? It's probably a very boring room with carpet and whiteboards. And now imagine the people in that room. There's, again, uh, a certain demographic. Lots of people remember what modems sound, sound like. Lots of people with a few gray hairs starting to show up. And they all have a certain uh, comfortableness with technology. Now, what we really find is these workshops have a demographic that typically means they solve problems that are very comfortable to themselves and also are less friendly towards technology, being that most of the people in these rooms are not digital natives. So what we really need is we need the next generation of custodians of our cities of the world, Dubai being a particularly smart and happy city, is really to come and get that message out there of what are the problems you see in the city? What makes your difficult life in the city difficult? What makes you less happy in the city? And really get that out there and be collaborative across social media forms so the leaders and the people that are having these innovation workshops are not only solving the problems that they're comfortable with or they have visibility into, but really pick up the whole gamut of the people in the city. You guys have one big advantage. You're all digital natives. This stuff comes naturally to you. We don't need to train you on these sort of things. So what would that future look like as being digital natives? What do you want as digital natives? There's lots of studies that say, because of the witnessing our parents yelling in the car in traffic jams, digital natives don't want to even use cars at all. And they want multimodal transport that can fly and can, be uh, can use car sharing, and I never need to own a car. That's what we need to hear from you. We need to get that message out there to the people that are working on these technologies so that we can make sure they are ready for the next generation of custodians. So if we put this all together and we look at what problems are relevant to our city, we take the abilities of you as all digital natives to look at these problems differently and look at what you want 30 and 40 years from now, we make the assumption that technology will get us there. It may not be the technology you have today, it may look completely different. We may not even know what it looks like. But let's make the assumption that that technology will get there. We truly believe that through using IoT and being unconstrained in our innovation and our thinking, that we can really make Dubai and your choice of host city in the world truly one of the happiest and smartest cities in the world. Thank you very much.